Hello beautiful people, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, special welcome. Thank you so much for clicking on this video. I really appreciate it. If you are not new here, if this is not your first time seeing my face, thank you again for clicking on another video of mine. But without further ado, I'm gonna be sharing with you guys some of the factors that go into choosing a hall of residence at the UE Mona, like how much you're willing to spend, what type of community you're looking for in a hall, or if you're not looking for community at all. This is actually my most frequently asked question down in the comments and also over on Instagram in my DM so I just thought it might be beneficial to make a video kind of exploring all of the options you have on campus as well as different facts about each hall by the way my name is Adun Aluren and I'm a fourth year medical student studying at the University of the West Indies and if any of what I just said is of any interest to you then keep watching Before we get started, I want to say that I have of course not lived at all of these halls of residence and the information I'm about to share is just based on my own research or based on what I've heard from my friends and classmates and other students around campus, what I've seen for myself as I was on campus, as well as information listed on the UE Mona's official website. And all links that I mentioned are gonna be linked below in the description box. For each hall, I will be discussing whether that hall is a traditional or non-traditional hall, the different accommodation options that hall offers, as well as its amenities, whether it is co-ed or single sex the culture that hall is known for and of course the cost to live there all the prices that I'm gonna be quoting are from the UE Mona's official website current for the academic year 2019 2020 for particular halls especially the non-traditional ones I actually advise calling to see what those rates have inflated to for the particular academic year that you are going into because of course these rates are subject to change. All prices are quoted in JMD because that is the currency in which you will be charged. I didn't want to go ahead and convert to USD because as you know exchange rates do fluctuate over time. There are actually a total of 12 hauls so I'll try to keep each description pretty brief so that this video isn't too long but please feel free to skip through this video using the chapters or using the timestamps that will be listed in the description box as well as in the top comment. So let's start with 138 Phase 1 aka Leslie Robinson Hall. This is the hall in which I lived in, and I lived here the entire time I was at UE Mona. I actually lived in three different rooms, all on block C during my time. First, I lived in like a middle room on the third floor, then I later moved into a corner room on the third floor when one of my flatmates moved out. Then I went on my leave of absence that y'all know about and came back that y'all know about, and I moved into a corner room again, but on the sixth floor, and that is actually a pro tip for living at 138 phase one or any of the 138 halls that we're going to talk about later is living in a corner room and the reason is because the corner rooms have two windows and you will be needing them Whew because there is no air conditioning. <laughs> Generally speaking, the halls of residence at UE Mona don't have air conditioning, and this is something that I could not wrap my head around when I first moved there, but it is a thing. Some halls, however, do offer options to have air conditioning in your room, and we'll talk about those later as we talk about those halls. Now, personally for me and some other students I knew, by the time I realized how this thing really go, I was hot, I was sweating and all these things, I actually ended up purchasing a portable air conditioning and having it installed in my room. Now let's be clear, back then when I did it, it was complete contraband. It was not allowed and I would have to like uninstall it and hide it when maintenance was coming and all these different kinds of things. It was completely not allowed. But now things have changed a little bit and they, I wouldn't say they really allow it, but if they find out that you have it, they won't kick you off the hall or anything, but they will charge you a surcharge for having that in your room and I guess pulling electricity every month. So 
phase one is a co-ed non-traditional hall of residence it is pretty new it was built in 2015 so it's a pretty recent build and it has three blocks blocks a B and C. They offer only single bedroom accommodations on this phase. Each bedroom has its own bathroom and then you share a kitchen and common area with the members of your flat. And each flat has a total of 12 members. So on 138 phase one, there are a total of two laundry facilities in which you have to make appointments and buy coins in order to do your laundry. There's also a little convenience store in the back that is extremely convenient they have your water down there you can actually order your five gallon bottle of water and she'll deliver them to you on haul you can get credit snacks pastries patties she even offers printing services down there it's really convenient for your last minute assignments i personally have probably bought like 50 blueberry pop tarts from this convenience store during last semester alone so needless to say it's super convenient it comes in the clutch it's open late and then it's open again early the next morning so it is definitely a go-to spot if you live on 138 phase one now most halls on campus have hall culture and before i go on to describe what lrh's hall culture is like i just want to quickly describe what hall culture on the whole is like because this is a concept that i couldn't really wrap my head around before i got to ue so each hall basically for their freshers so that is students in their first year of university go through a process called the first year experience and it's basically a process in which those students are indoctrinated into the hall culture so that week or two weeks or however long it is those kids spend time with other freshers then the upperclassmen from that hall kind of get them into what the hall culture is like they get hall names participate in activities and uh, competitions with the other halls and things like that so that's what hall culture is like now for me when i first got to ue i had already done a first degree I was like 23 and needless to say I wasn't interested in all of that. I was not going to wake up early in the morning and run no laps for nobody at my big age. So personally I didn't participate in hall culture. Um, getting a hall name and all that stuff but it's something that people actually really enjoy and have a good time participating in the reason why I want to include it in this video is because I do get a lot of DMS from people that say that they feel they're too mature to live on campus and I just wanted to offer this information that you don't really have to participate in all the activities and hall culture of halls and some halls don't really even have that so for 138 phase one i really had the option of participating or not of course as you know i opted out and they don't hold it against you and you're not forced to participate so for the older folks that do message me and they have that concern i want to say with confidence that 138 phase one is not a bad option for you the age ranges of the students that live there can range as young as 17 18 like i said but as old as 30 something i've lived on flats with girls who were married with kids and we had a fabulous time we didn't have any issues so finally the cost to live at 138 phase one is 56,295 jamaican dollars per month So Gerald Layler Flats is actually located on the same premises or behind the same gate as 138 Phase 1 is and is actually under the same management. The difference in these flats, however, is the accommodation style. These flats are arranged where you have your own bedroom and bathroom and then you share a common area and kitchen only with about three other people, I think it is. It basically looks like a small apartment in there and you have now the option of having an air-conditioned room culture of this hall is kind of non-existent i'd say 
Um, I'm sure if you're interested in participating in hall activities, you can go ahead and probably join phase one's activities. But as far as I know, the hall itself doesn't really do anything. So the students that tend to live in Gerald Laylor are exchange students or medicine interns or students coming in from other countries to do a quick elective. Or occasionally, people tend to move to Gerald Laylor if they are having too many issues with their room over at 138 phase one and management moves them there. So the cost of Gerald Laylor flats is actually listed at coming in at the same price as Leslie Robinson Hall, so $56,295 per month. But I would say call and confirm because I am pretty sure the air conditioning rooms are gonna run you up a couple more dollars, but that's what they have listed, but definitely call and check it out. George Elaine Hall, also known as 138 Phase 2, was complete the year after 138 Phase 1, hence the extremely creative name of Phase 2. The only stark difference between Phase 1 and Phase 2 is the fact that Phase 2 offers the option of a double bedroom as well as a single bedroom like Phase 1 does and they actually just have more blocks. But the setup is quite similar. You share a kitchen and common area with the members of your flat, but you have your own bedroom and bathroom. Phase two actually has, to me, a larger laundry facility, and I've actually done my laundry over there a couple times if I was unable to get a laundry appointment over on my phase. So like I said, this hall looks almost identical to phase one, both inside and out. And from my experience, it is quite culturally similar in that you have the option to opt in or opt out for hall culture and hall activities. The only difference I would say is that because they have more blocks and more students, phase two does tend to seem to be a little bit busier and a little bit noisier perhaps than phase one. And what I've noticed about 138 management what they do with phase two, I guess because they have that extra space, like I said, they have more blocks than phase one does. They always seem to use an extra block and rent it out to an outside group. For instance, there was a time where they like rented out a block to the police training academy and of course those people have to wake up early and do drills and this and that and I remember that being like a stressor to a lot of my friends that lived on phase two at that time so i mean i think that's just something to keep in mind the cost of a single room at 138 phase two is the same as that at 138 phase one so fifty six thousand two hundred and ninety five dollars and the cost of a double occupancy room at 138 phase two is thirty two thousand six hundred and seventy dollars So Marlene Hamilton Hall, aka Postgrad, is that hall in which every single student on campus covets or is like their hall goal for some point in their time at UE. It's perfect for introverts or busy people or more mature people, like I said, who aren't really interested in all the hustle and bustle of hall culture and hall life. This hall is technically reserved for postgraduate students, but I know a lot of first years, second years, third years who actually have rooms at postgrad. So it's not impossible to get in once you apply. But getting into this hall is quite a bit of work besides applying it seems that you have to really harass management give them some big old reason as to why you want to live there when you're not post-grad sometimes they say they don't have rooms available and then you hear your friend go on the next day because she harassed somebody she got a room and it's always some story like that so it's not impossible to get a room there but they do make you kind of like vie for the spots so post-grad's claim to fame <laughs> is the accommodation type 
So the accommodation at postgrad is basically that of a studio apartment. So you have your bedroom, kitchen, and bathroom all in one space, complete with a balcony. And one extra thing about postgrad is that you do have the option of getting an air-conditioned studio. The only downfall, unfortunately, of postgrad that I've heard from many people is bad Wi-Fi. Now, apparently, postgrad's Wi-Fi is bad because they are still connected to UE's main Wi-Fi, but the hall itself is offset from the remainder of campus. So perhaps my logic is that the Wi-Fi doesn't extend as far. I don't know. Whatever the case may be, perhaps consider investing in like a small Wi-Fi box for your personal use because I think all the other aspects of the accommodation should be to your liking. So again, for the mature crowd or the crowd that is concerned about noise or sharing kitchen, sharing common area, or having to participate in hall activities, I would actually recommend applying to postgrad. So strangely enough, the cost of a studio at postgrad is actually cheaper per month than all of those aforementioned halls, and it comes in at 43,044 Jamaican dollars per month, and the super studio is $48,450. Elsa Leo Riney Hall, aka Towers, was only built in 2012, so it's a pretty new build as well. It was considered the new hall before 138 Phase 1 came about. They have five towers or buildings total, and four of those towers offer only single occupancy, and then there's one tower that offers double occupancy rooms. So the setup here is that you have your own bedroom, or a double if you opt for a double, but you share bathrooms and kitchen and common area with the members of your flat. Now, Towers is one of those halls that got all kind of things going on. They have a gym, they have a barber shop, commissary of course, laundry of course, and just a whole lot of stuff going on. And this hall is actually pretty big on hall culture. So much so that it is almost mandatory that you participate in hall culture or else your spot for the next year is gonna be compromised. So I know many med students that either weren't <laughs> welcome back the next year because they didn't have time or didn't have interest in participating in hall events or just didn't wanna go back because of too much going on but don't get me wrong if you're into community and sports and activity and vibes then this is the hall for you and trust me you will enjoy it at towers so the cost for towers and many of the halls that we're going to discuss later would be billed annually or per semester unlike the 138 and postgrad halls that are billed per month so I have to read out these big figures, okay? <laughs> so for the academic year, a double at Towers is gonna cost you $228,960, and a single occupancy is gonna cost you $269,240 for the academic year. So Urban Hall. What is unique about Irvin Hall is that it is a traditional hall, but it was recently renovated and is now managed by that company, 138 Student Living. So it is technically 138 Phase 3. Because of that, it looks again almost identical to 138 Phase 1 and 138 Phase 2. In fact, just like 138 Phase 2, it does offer the option of double occupancy rooms and single occupancy rooms. This is also a co-ed room like all the others mentioned so far. And because it is a traditional hall, it does have a big booming hall culture as well. So since Irvin Hall is technically a 138 hall, they are billed monthly, but then since they're still a traditional hall, for some reason they're priced much cheaper than 138 Phase 1 and 138 Phase 2. 
So the cost of a single occupancy room at Irvin Hall is $32,960 per month and that of a double occupancy room is $27,810 per month. So why live on phase one or phase two if Irvin is so similar but yet so much cheaper? And I really don't know what to tell you. For me, when I moved on campus, there was no such thing as Irvin Hall at the time. It was closed down for renovation. And by the time they reopened, I don't even know where I was in the universe. Maybe on my leave of absence, maybe not. So one of the entrances to the Rex Nettleford Hall is located right across the street from 138 and once you enter the gate you would walk down a set of steps to see the whole compound. So the compound itself kind of sits in a valley of sorts. This hall is named after the late Vice Chancellor Professor Ralston Milton Rex Nettleford who is known for his contribution to UE and Caribbean culture at large and his choreography and involvement in the National Dance Theatre Company. I mention this because this influence of the performing arts is still evident and prominent in this hall's culture. So sometimes you would hear about their choir fest or DJ competition and things of that nature. So Rex also offers single occupancy rooms with that dynamic of a shared bathroom and common area. Of course they have laundry facilities, computer lab and things of that nature and they are known for hosting quite a number of events on their compound. This hall was opened in 2002 so it's not too old but compared to all the halls that I've mentioned before it's definitely not as new and updated so that's something to consider as well. The cost to occupy a single occupancy room at Rex is $261,820 for the academic year. Right next door to Rex is AZ Preston Hall. This hall has a prominent hall culture as well, and they offer programs like their leadership development program, their volunteer and outreach program, their environmental program, and things of that nature. As far as accommodation goes, they offer both double and single occupancy rooms, and they have a lounge, computer room, study room, and conference room on site. Personally, I've never been down into Preston Hall Hall, so I can't really speak on whether it's updated or not but it is one of the older halls so you can definitely keep that in mind. The cost of a double occupancy room at Preston for the academic year is $202,460 and the cost of a single occupancy room is $239,825. Chancellor Hall is the only male hall on campus and it is big on hall culture. The hall culture is so big that to me, Chancellorites seemed like a fraternity to me when I saw them during like orientation time and the way they have their new recruits or their freshers lined up and doing all that chanting and ranting it kind of reminds me of a fraternity it's one of the oldest halls on campus so it boasts of rich traditions and cultures and legacies and guys on campus seem to be really proud to be a part of that as far as accommodation goes they offer single occupancy rooms and to my understanding the bathrooms are shared. Then they have a block called Block X that as far as I know kind of has like an apartment setup. So on our way to the hospital in the mornings we tend to walk through Chancellor so I see quite a bit of Chancellor on a day-to-day -day basis and to me its biggest downfall is the fact that it is not modern and the upkeep is poor. So like I said Chancellor is one of the oldest halls on campus so I want to cut it some slack in that department but if I can keep it 100 and I could be real the university can definitely stand to renovate that hall of note about Chancellor however in my opinion they have one of the best commissaries on campus it's open pretty late at night and then it reopens again in the morning pretty early and they tend to have a lot of things in a really small space and throughout my time at UE I got most of my hair products there so I just thought that was worth mentioning and it's located in the middle of the campus 
campus so it's close to literally everything so the cost for a single occupancy room is two hundred and twenty thousand seven hundred and forty five dollars per academic year and a room in block x is two hundred and ninety two thousand eight hundred and twenty five dollars per academic year Mary Seacole Hall is like the sister hall to Chancellor Hall. It's an all-girls hall and they have a sorority-like culture similar to Chancellor's fraternity-like culture and they're close in proximity as well. Mary Seacole Hall is one of the older halls on campus so they're pretty big on hall culture as well as you would imagine. They offer both single and double occupancy rooms with bathrooms located at the end of each block to share. So they have a laundry facility, TV room, study room, beauty salon apparently i've never seen it but they say it's there <laughs> computer lab and a pantry similar to chancellor in my opinion unfortunately mary Seacole hall could use some updating in my humble opinion so the university can stand to get on that as well the cost of a double occupancy room at mary Seacole hall is 186 thousand eight hundred and twenty five dollars per academic year and a single is two hundred and twenty thousand seven hundred and forty five dollars per academic year so taylor hall is basically right next door to chancellor hall and looks pretty similar from the outside besides the fact that it is blue in color and it is a co-ed hall so taylor hall is pretty big on hall culture as well and they are known for different things like their commissary <laughs> for me i visited there quite a bit in my freshman year to buy bun and cheese that was like my thing because it's pretty close to the med faculty taylor offers double and single occupancy rooms and the cost of a double at Taylor is $186,825 per academic year and a single is $220,745 per academic year. So the last hall is ABC Hall and ABC is actually located on the Hospital Ring Road so it's quite far from all the other halls of residence but it is super close to the hospital so that is something of interest to maybe med students and nursing students. In fact, ABC Hall used to be the official nurses quarters but in 2011 it was renovated and changed to accommodate more UE students. So because of that they do have that first year experience that I talked about and hall culture like many of the other halls do. They offer single room accommodation with that shared kitchen shared bathroom dynamic. They have a laundry room, multi-purpose room, and a cafe that I have personally visited a couple of times while I was at the hospital and needed lunch. The cost to live at ABC is $232,670 per academic year. Again, I have only lived in one of these halls, so this information is based on what I've seen, what I've heard, and again, what is on the UE Mona's website. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to go into very much detail about each of these hauls or else this video would be even longer so please if you know anyone who lived at any of these halls please reach out to them and see if you can get any more information from people who have actually lived on and experienced these halls firsthand. You can also call or email these halls directly and ask detailed questions or you can go through YouTube and watch some people's room tours and hall tours if you can find them and I'll try to link as many down below that I can. But feel free to comment down below if you have any questions and as always you can go ahead and shoot me a DM on Instagram and just like I reply to every single comment in the comments I do reply to each and every single DM as well and if you have anything to share about your own experience about living on hall please do comment down below I'm sure it'll be a big help to someone else choosing a hall is a very important decision because your compatibility with your hall actually sets the foundation for your quality of life during your time at UWE 
So trust me, you wanna be happy and you wanna be comfortable because you're gonna be at these halls for three to five years and you don't wanna spend the entire time just bouncing from hall to hall. So guys, I really hope this video helps in your decision-making process. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really appreciate it. If you have come this far, then girl, you may as well go ahead and hit that subscribe button and hit that notification bell so you can be notified each and every single time I post a video. Again, thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in my next video. Bye!